is no joke. We were down there just trying to talk to people. Uh, what do you see here of majority of people here don't yeah. think like, like them? Yeah, I think we've, uh, we've found enough peace here today. It is, it's no joke. I'm going to my car. I'm going to my car. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to my car. <laughs> There's so many things that are wrong on both sides. If, if this was solved tomorrow, if suddenly there were two states and people were living in peace, would Bin Laden go away? I don't think it would happen. But what you're doing is you're taking an argument away. Dude, this is messed up. There goes my friend. See you. <laughs> How hard is it for you to be in the minority in this region, a Christian in a Muslim country? I have no problem whatsoever living with the Muslims. We are worshipping Allah. And uh, uh, I, I, I am worshipping the same God that the, the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews are worshipping. The one God. Religion is being used as a mask to hide the cruelty, the, the ugliness of, of, of violence. Moderates, they are the majority, but their voices are not loud enough. What are your thoughts on the global war on terror? 9-11, that breaks the hearts of every, every human being. But I think the best way is not to fight only. You have to look for the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. What our American brothers and friends need is a cultural strategy. Without understanding each other, without this mutual respect and understanding, there is no, there's no peace. It's, it's impossible. Mission is impossible. Not only is it impossible, it's downright scary. Just ask journalist Fawad Hussein. Ten years ago, while he was jailed for criticizing Jordan's economic policies, he met Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq. They remained pen pals up until Zarqawi was killed in 2006, and according to what Zarqawi told him, America is playing right into al-Qaeda's hands. القاعده هجمت نيويورك وواشنطن في 11 سبتمبر لانها غير قادره ان تحارب امريكا على ارض امريكا من اجل ان تستدرج امريكا لتاتي الى المنطقه العربيه وتقاتلها على الارض العربيه Had we just left Afghanistan and said that's it you know we're done what would have happened لانه بعد افغانستان لم يبقى للقاعده اي مكان يستطيعوا ان يعملوا به لو لم تدخل امريكا العراق لما كانت القاعده الان كما هي عليه الان لا كانت انتهت ما انتهى افغانستان سيكولوجية العرب والمسلمين هي مع كل من يقاتل المحتل. If Bin Laden would be caught or killed right now, would it make any difference? Nothing. لا شيء أبدا. لأنه هاي الزرقاوي إن قتل ولم يحدث شيء. وإذا قتل Bin Laden والظاهر لن يحدث شيء. لأنه أصبحت القاعدة هي فكرة عابرة للقارات مثل ما صارت العولة من عابرة للقارات. And that idea is reaching more and more people each day. With Operation Special Delivery only seven weeks away, I need to go back to the beginning. And the beginning for Osama is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a country ruled by one family and governed by one brand of fundamental Islam, Wahhabism. Osama was born here. He went to school here. And in the late 70s, he was radicalized here. Do you feel that America is trying to fight a war against the entire religion of Islam? Well, they went to Afghanistan to get Osama bin Laden, and the Taliban wouldn't give him up. 
We were seeking peace in Afghanistan. دخلوا بسيارة الإسعاف من الدبابة هو المدفع. That's a good question. Do you think Osama bin Laden caused 9/11? إذا كان رجل في كهف استطاع أن يعمل هذا الحدث كيف لو قام المسلمون كلهم ضد أمريكا تحت راية رجل واحد؟ See, but I don't think 1.2 billion Muslims think the same way you think. آية واحدة من القرآن تأتي به. So why has no one said that verse yet? يخطط لها لا لا تستبعد لو أحرقنا آبار النفط ظلما وعدوانا لنحرمكم منها. You said Saudi Arabia is a country divided. What do you mean by that? Uh, not divided, but not yet building the national unity that we are looking for. One important issue in the kingdom is to organize the relation between the religious establishment and the political establishment. Mm -hmm. This issue hasn't been resolved yet, and it must be resolved. Otherwise, extremists, uh, terrorists, they may dictate some of their ideologies on us. And we still have so many people who are refusing to accept the reality. Are there still radicals within the country? We still have a lot. Yeah. And they are dangerous, by the way. Uh, we should not uh, underestimate uh, the ability of the extremists. Those people are ready to die. Those people are ready to destroy. Those people are ready to kill themselves, kill their families. They don't care about life. And therefore, I think they are a threat to us in Saudi Arabia, then neighboring countries, then to the world. In an unprecedented nine-month operation, netting more than 170 al-Qaeda suspects and more than $5 million, Saudi intelligence officials say they thwarted plans to fly aircraft into oil facilities, attack security installations, kill senior officials, and send money to al-Qaeda in Iraq. But the raids reveal a far more worrying trend for the Saudis. The war in Iraq is spilling over into Saudi Arabia. So right in front of the head office of the Matawa, which are the religious police, is Chop Chop Square. And I'm standing right on the drain where they <laughs> cut people's heads off and the blood goes into that drain. Everybody stands around and watches. They kill people in the morning and then play soccer in the afternoons. <laughs> what a place. It's complete culture shock for me to be in Saudi Arabia. It's an absolute another world from anything I've ever experienced, any place I've ever been. We've been to Egypt and Morocco and, and Jordan and the Palestinian territories, and these places are, are so progressive by comparison. There is no separation of church and state. The church is the state, the state is the church, the religion and the ideology is what runs everything. Boys and girls are separated from the time they're like 10. You can't see La Perla's Razir ad. That's wrong. Oh, you can't see Posh Spice's shoulder. You can't see the knee or the thigh. Can I, can I police my own thoughts? No. And that's the problem when you have a country that's built entirely on the marriage between church and state. There isn't much room for moderates. There's no freedom of speech or freedom of the press. Just speaking up or writing anything critical of the royal family is illegal, and public protest is actually forbidden. The Ministry of Information monitors the web for any immoral content, but websites supporting Al-Qaeda seem to get through just fine. What do the fundamentalists hope to achieve? Power, yeah. in the name of God. And that's where I don't like it. They manipulate the Islamic teachings to fit different situations, different conditions, to ultimately lead them to, to power. Yeah. I don't think a religious person, be it Christian or a Jewish or a Muslim, by his own upbringing and teaching, is qualified to be a public official. It's just not. Politics completely different from, from religion. And I don't think any religious person is qualified to be a public official. A good amount of secularism in every Arab political system is badly needed. Drawing clear lines between where an imam, a priest, role and responsibility ends and a politician or a public official responsibility begins, we need it for stability. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden, per se, is not the problem. The school of thought, the followers, the teaching that he has planted in the Islamic conscience, in the Muslim world, is where the restructuring and the fight should begin. It's unfortunate, but he's the product of this system. He's the product of the establishment of Saudi Arabia. There is no denial. We have to accept that.
So I went to a school to find out for myself what kids are being taught about the West. These two young, open-minded, free-thinking students, handpicked by the administration,